In this video, we're going to look at vector spaces that are not of infinite dimension. So let V be such a vector space. What it means is, as we saw in the previous video, that V can be written as the span of a finite number of vectors in V. We're going to show that any minimal set of vectors that span V must have the same number of vectors. Now, what does it mean for a set of vectors to be minimal? It means that if you take away any vector from the set, the resulting set no longer spans V. Minimal spanning sets are connected to the notion of linear independence, which we are going to define next. There are actually two equivalent ways of defining linear independence of vectors, and we are going to look at both of them. The first definition says the following. Vectors v1 up to vk are linearly independent if there does not exist an index i from 1 up to k such that vi can be written as a linear combination of the remaining vectors. And the second way to define it is as follows. Vectors v1 up to vk are linearly independent if the equation lambda 1 times v1 plus all the way lambda k times vk equal to zero vector where these lambdas are scalars has the unique solution lambda 1 equals lambda 2 equals and so on equals lambda k equals zero. We'll prove that these two definitions are equivalent in a separate video. Now let me show you a set of linear independent vectors just to illustrate. So for example, I'm looking at vectors from R3. So are these linearly independent? What you need to do is to solve this equation and see if there's any solution other than setting lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 to 0. Now, uh, what we can do is we can write this out. So the first entry of the three tuples will give us this. And the second entry will give us this. And the third entry will give us this. Well, because lambda 2 is 0, that means it is 0 here. So lambda 1 is also 0. And if lambda 1 is 0, lambda 3 is also 0. So there's a unique solution. And it's a trivial solution. So that means these are linearly independent according to definition 2. Now here, the set V1 up to Vk is called a linearly independent set. Clearly, if the set is not linearly independent, it cannot be minimal. And let me illustrate this with an example. So suppose that V1, V2, V3 is not a linearly independent set. Say I can write v1 as 2v2 minus v3. Okay, so according to the first definition, this is not linear independent. Now, notice that it is not a minimal set of vectors that span the vector space spanned by these three vectors, right? In the span of these three vectors, every vector can be written as a1v1 plus a2v2 plus a3v3 for some scalars a1, a2, and a3. Now, if v1 can be represented by this, then I can write this as 2a1v2 minus a1v3 plus a2v2 plus a3v3, which is the same as 2a1 plus a2 plus minus a1 plus a3 v3 and this is v2 here so if you look at this this is a linear combination involving only v2 and v3 so we can span the same set here let me call this s so if this is s then v2 v3 also span this set s and so v1 v2 v3 is not minimal so that illustrates the result that if you have a set that is not linear independent, it cannot be minimal. A minimal set of vectors in V that spans V is called a basis.
And this is a very important notion. For example, in R3, every vector looks like this, A, B, C, for some real numbers A, B, and C. I claim that this is a basis for R3 because, first of all, if you take a linear combination of this, where A is attached to the first vector, B is attached to the second vector, and C is attached to the third vector, then you get this vector A, B, C. So definitely the span of this is equal to R3. Now there's no way you can write any of these as a linear combination of the other two. For example, if you look at the first vector here, well you have one in the first entry, but in the other two vectors, the first entry has zero. There's no way you can express this first vector as a linear combination of these other two vectors. Because whatever linear combination you take of these two vectors here, the first component will always be zero. And you can argue similarly for the other two vectors. So this set is linear independent. And if you take away any vectors, you will no longer span R3. For example, if you take away the second vector, then you will not get any vector with a non-zero number in the second entry. So this is a minimal set that spans R3. And so according to the definition here, it's called a basis for R3. Now we're going to prove why different bases must have the same number of vectors. And the key is the following claim. So take a linear independent set A of vectors v1 up to vk. And suppose that I have a basis for the vector space v. The claim is that the number of vectors in A must be at most the number of vectors in B. So let's see how this claim actually gives that result before we see a proof of this claim. First of all, if V is a vector space that is not of infinite dimension, then you cannot have an infinite set of linear independent vectors because of this claim. And so all bases must be finite. Now take two of them, B and B prime. Well, using this claim, we can say that the number of elements in B is at most the number of elements in B prime because B is a basis, so B must be a linearly independent set, according to definition. But by the same claim, we can also say that B prime cannot have more than the number of vectors in B. So combining these two, we get that B and B prime have the same number of vectors. So using this result, we can define the dimension of a vector space that is not of infinite dimension as follows. It is the number of vectors in a basis. So the dimension of a vector space that is not of infinite dimension is the number of vectors in a basis. So in the case of R3, the dimension is going to be 3 because we have a basis that have 3 elements. So we now prove this claim. And there's a standard proof for this. Here I'm going to give you a sketch. So suppose by way of contradiction that k is larger than n. All right. So remember k is the number of vectors in A and n is the number of vectors in the basis. What we do is we move one vector from A to B at a time. Each time we also take away a vector from B so that the resulting set is still a basis. Okay. So for the first time it will look like this. So removing v1 from a and adding to b. Okay, so a is this, v1 up to vk. And my set b looks like this, v1 up to bn. So I'm going to move v1 over there. And it gives the set b prime consisting of v1, b1 all the way up to bn. Now, because B is a basis, it means that I can write V1 as a linear combination of B1 up to Bn. One thing about vectors in a linear independent set is that none of them can be the zero vector. So V1 cannot be the zero vector here. And so that means at least one of these lambdas must be non-zero. Then there exists some I prime such that lambda I prime is non-zero.
and that means that bi prime can be written as a linear combination of the set b prime with bi prime taken away all right why is that well because lambda i prime is non-zero i can bring the term lambda i prime times bi prime to the left and bring v1 to the right and so i'll get this so bi prime is now a linear combination of these that means uh, we can remove bi prime from b prime and obtain another set that span v so v1 is now moved to b and bi prime is gone and we assume that i prime is one we can reorder things so v1 is now over to b and say b1 is gone all right so the next step would be to move v2 to this set and then we'll be able to find something to remove we can actually remove a vector from among b2 up to bn well this requires a bit of thinking uh, but it uses the fact that a is a linearly independent set obviously v2 can be written as a linear combination of these things but in that linear combination, at least one of the scalar that is multiplied to one of these b vectors must be non-zero, right? Because if all of them are zero, then v2 would be a scalar multiple of v1, which contradicts that a is a linear independent set. So the claim is you can keep moving vectors from a to b, and each time you can take out a b vector so that the resulting set still spans v. Because a has more vectors than b, eventually there will be no more b vectors in this set. And in that case, we are left with vectors vn plus 1 up to vk over here. And so at the end of the picture, when every b vector is removed, it looks like this. Because v1 up to vn, this set, as we maintain, still spans v, that means every one of these vectors, in particular this one, can be written as a linear combination of v1 up to vn. But that's not possible because we said that A is a linear independent set and we are now saying that Vn plus 1 can be written as a linear combination of V1 up to Vn so that's a contradiction and that proves the claim so K could not be bigger than N and must be at most N